Welcome to another Fleet Ops audio commentary brought to you by Hal. For you today, we have a 2 versus 2 on the map Nebula Stream. And let's get straight into it. On the top team, we have Empty Slot, who is also known as Shute, with his teammate down here, Fallout, in the orange. And it does appear that we are loading board textures, and that is because Fallout is the orange board. And back up here with Shute or Empty Slot, we have the purple Dominion. Now if we go down to their opponents, we have Yandin and Boggs, and we have Boggs as the light green, if I can find them, Borg as well. Oh, it kind of blends into the background there. And it looks like more loading of board textures, so it'll be just a moment, folks. And we bring him down to his teammate, Yandin, as the dark green board. So this should be an interesting match. Um, three board players, so that should be rather fun to see how they go about it. If um, we look over here, basically just some scouts going around. Um, you see that... Yandin down here, the dark green Borg, is putting up his conduction matrix. I expect to see that from all the other Borg as well. You see Box is doing that, as well as Fallout, although it does look like Fallout has a leg up, getting that conduction matrix up a bit faster. Up here we have Shute, he's already put down his yard, and he hasn't queued anything up yet though, but he is getting his mining station both the Tritanium and Dilithium up at the same time, while his one constructor over here built the technology lab. I would be expecting to see S2s, so that, to go against the two Borg opponents. And I do apologize, unfortunately I am not able to tell which avatar they are, or at least the Dominion is. We'll take a look over here and we have, I believe that is an Optimized Borg, Fallout as the orange Borg. And we'll take a look down here. The dark green Borg, Yandin, is also optimized. And up top we have Boggs, who is optimized as well. Okay, so we have three Opti Borgs and one Dominion player. Um, and we will see whether the Dominion player gives Fallout and Shute the advantage over the double Borg. And we see. Fallout is establishing energy nodes level 1. As Yandam begins that, as well, it does not appear that Box has quite yet started that, or it's already been finished. So, really, just now, not much going on. Getting the resourcing put up, mining off the moons, fairly standard stuff for everyone. And there we go, Boggs just went off with established energy nodes, level 1 just slightly behind. And here we see Fallout is already putting up, or putting down, rather, a collective uplink. And has yet to decide what it is, but he is at 9 connections. We'll see if he's going to be going for a scout cube, but I would expect something larger, especially seeing as their opponent are both board. So if we take a look at the Dominion, we see that he has yet to build, well, anything whatsoever, although he is going straight into a large yard without having any expansion up yet. Um, I would expect, I'm going to guess T15, so we'll see whether he does that. When we go down to Boggs, and we see that he also has a collective uplink, and I would expect either one of Boggs of Yandin to go for early sphere. And back up here, we see that Fallout hasn't made anything either just yet. So it would be, it might be a rather boring game if they all go for early sphere, as we see that a nice little play from Fallout using his miner to transport onto that scout, although the scout is going to be able to get away, only losing about half of its crew. 
and we see Yandin doing the exact same thing to Fallout Scout. Fallout really needs to move that scout away, otherwise he will lose it, as you see that even the resource assimilators for the Borg have just an insane amount of crew, and yes, Fallout is going to move away, losing just about half of his crew, the exact same thing as Yandin. So it, well, definitely interesting. So we'll go up here to Shute, or as he's known as Empty Slot, and I was incorrect. He is going for a B5 Battle Cruiser prototype, um, and it should be interesting to see how that does against the Borg. We'll take a look at his main base, and he is, oh, he has queued up the S2 Escort prototype. However. The S2 prototype, he does not, oh, he's just now getting it to research, he does not have the resources. Chute is going to be at a severe disadvantage when putting up that large yard before getting the expansion going. A little slow on the resource take. As we take a look, he is severely hurting for dilithium right now. So we won't know just how many ships he'll be able to produce. We take a look back at his teammate, or Fallout, and he still has done nothing with his collective uplink. He's still gathering collective connections. At this point, reaching 30, I'm going to assume that there will be a sphere from him. And that's what he'll go directly into. We see that he is mining down at this bottom Tritanium expansion, as well as Dilithium over here. Now we take a look at Boggs. And Boggs, as well, has a collective uplink and 37 collective connections, so I anticipate a sphere from him as well. And we see that he is doing the standard, or I guess the only thing that you would do is the two miners per moon for the Borg. As well as he is, has one resource assimilator on his dilithium expansion. But as we can see, he has done nothing with his titanium expansion just yet. Although Yandit does have a resource assimilator on his titanium moon, as well as his dilithium moon. And again, collective uplink. Just waiting for the collective connections. You need 50 to put down a sphere. So it, right now it is basically just a waiting game. It probably would have been better for Fallout and Shute to have gone smaller ships to where they might have been able to keep those spheres from coming about instead of waiting as Boggs and Yandin will have the advantage with two spheres. We'll take a look at the little prototype and we'll see whether Shute actually uses it or will keep it safe at his base. He is moving it down, and he will be attacking Boggs' scout. Let's see if the scout will get away. We'll take a look at the prototype and see what kind of weaponry it has. It has a Polaron beam cannon. It has a hangar for fighters. I don't know how much useful those will be against the Borg, though, especially against the large ships. And two Tetrion torpedo launchers. Those will be good against the Borg, as... Since they don't have shields, hull damage is better, and that, I believe, is what torpedoes are good at. We go back up, and we see that he is able to build one of the, B the B5s, despite his earlier resource issues. Um, he seems to be doing alright right now, and he is building S2 to help support the B5s. We do not know, though, whether he has the Alpha Catracel White yet, which would be a great help on getting those Tetrion torpedoes out faster. And again, we take a look at Fallout. He's at 49. He's just about to hit 50 connections. I fully expect to see a Sphere chassis going down sometime soon. And there it is. There's the Sphere chassis. We'll see whether he, what kind of Sphere it is in a moment. I would expect a Regen Prime Sphere seems to be the way to go. We see Yandin as well has his chassis down. And Boggs' his sphere is actually already building, so he is going to be slightly faster than the other two. So it'll give him a slight advantage. We see that Boggs is already at 20 connections again. So I'm going to go ahead and say here that Boggs has researched energy nodes level 2. And that is why he has more connections than everyone else, considering he researched energy nodes level 1 at a less time. 
we look over here at back at Yandin in Yandin Sphere is now building. Yandin as well has 18 connections and 19 now, leading me to believe that both him and Box have both researched Energy Note Level 2, which will allow them to build spheres at a quicker rate than Fallout, which might just give them the extra needed boost they need to fight back against him. And we see that Fallout Sphere is building as well. We'll take a look over here at Shute or Empty Slot, and he has both the B5 and the prototype out as well as building another and he's got well, let's see looking around here see if he has an S2 anywhere no it does not appear that he does um, no one really harassing as the fact that all three board players went early sphere would kind of keep that from being a possibility and Yandin's sphere is already done I would expect him and Boggs' sphere to meet up and head out together, but again, I could be wrong. Boggs' sphere is moving straight towards Shute or Empty Slot, and Shute is moving his three B5s, Battlecruisers, which includes the prototype, along with his S2. Now, the S2 does not have the special. It does not have the Alpha Catcher Cell White just yet. Let's take a look up here and see if it's researching, and it is not researched yet. So, he will not have the advantage of being able to use that special, which would definitely be helpful against the board. And this Boggs' Sphere is just sitting there at his Dilithium Moon. He has a 